as you are seeing on this slide, I'll talk about my own experience. Um, uh, I have been fortunate to have a uh, good number of students here. Uh, before uh, symbiosis, I didn't have any uh, experience to guide students. Here I have got uh, good experience. If I say number, then Dr. Jyoti is my student. She was referring to me, I mean, that is the sir whom she was referring to. A dangerous man. <laughs> So, uh, my experience is all uh, symbiosis, not beyond that. I'll discuss on these, you know, quickly. I'll, uh, some of things would have, been, would have already been discussed with you. Uh, I'll give you my version, especially I'll start with why PhD, as Dr. Anuradha was talking about. First, these two questions are very important. I'll give you a story about some students. Uh, one student was with me, uh, with me uh, um, and um, when I made her ready for RAC, for proposal submission, we used to have demo sessions. When I had demo session with her, she was not able to perform. Then I asked her, come tomorrow, after preparation. But in the, on the same day, in the evening, she called me. She said, sir, I want to talk to you. I mean, message me rather. I said, OK, um, meet me tomorrow. She came and uh, she told me, sir, I have realized after going through the demo session yesterday that I may not be able to do justice with the PhD work and I would like to quit. One example, real example. One more student, especially in the context of second thing, you know, second thing is, do you have enough seriousness or do you think that your uh, reason for doing PhD will remain relevant for three or four years. Uh, I'm talking about non-STEM areas, management area. I'm basically from finance side, management. So um, usually here we take three to five years, not more than that. Rather, uh, I could say 2.5 to five years at the most. So do you think that you have a reason to do PhD and that reason will remain relevant for you for coming, to, coming three, for, uh, three to five years? This, these two questions are very important questions to be answered. And uh, you have to answer these questions. Your guide or nobody else can answer these questions. So what I believe that for, uh, from the student point of view, as I'm saying that this is for scholars, so these two questions uh, has to be answered by you. And if you are clear, they should continue. If you think that you are unable to answer or you have doubts, why you're doing PhD or you think that you will not be able to or your uh, purpose of doing PhD will not remain relevant, then I would very strongly suggest that you should uh, drop PhD, you should quit. Why I'm saying so? Because when you join PhD, what you have done? You are going to, suppose you quit due to any reason, I mean, if you are not having a relevant uh, reason to do PhD, what will happen? You would have wasted your time, you would have wasted your supervisor's time, you would have wasted an opportunity which somebody else would have been given from the university side. So it's a total loss, and trust me, I have seen many, I mean, uh, one more student, I can uh, cite the example right now. Uh, she uh, left the program because of family reason. So point here which I'm trying to make is, you should be very clear, I mean, if I uh, recall, uh, Dr. Pohekar at times told me that all over the world, if 100 people join PhD, hardly 30 to 40 people clear it. Remain, uh, remaining 60 to 70, a person people leave the uh, PhD journey. So uh, that's why what I'm insisting that you should take care of first two things. Ajay, what do you think that when you want to do PhD, what is the most important thing which PhD uh, supervisor look for in his student? Commitment for? Second thing only. Uh, so it means you're talking about second thing only. Curiosity, what else? Huh? Openness to learn, what else? I, I, I look for this third thing, unconditional commitment to hard work. I'll again share with you an uh, example of uh, one more student of mine. And whenever I talk about him, I really feel proud. You know, uh, when he came 
to me, uh, I don't know, when uh, somehow I took him. He was a full-timer. I don't know still uh, why I took him. Later on, I risk, uh, discovered that why I took him. Probably this is the reason I took him. When I took him, uh, his RSE was not completed. He was with some, uh, some other faculty in some other city. He came to me, in, well, he was in very ba bad shape. Um, uh, but somehow I took him. I made him ready for proposal. Within three months after joining me, he uh, presented, uh, defended his RSE, cleared his RSE. And uh, after he cleared his RSE, I realized that he was completely in a you know, bad shape. He was not able to speak. He was not able to write, not to speak or doing anything serious in research. Uh, when he came to me, uh, I gave him good idea. I, first of all, I mean, uh, changed his topic. His topic was made interesting, researchable, and RSE was cleared. But after he cleared his RSE, I got to know that he will not be able to complete his PhD. I am... Uh, in this habit of uh, you know making people realize if you can't do it then you yourself should quit i don't never um, go to dr pohika to say that i want to you know ask him to stop i mean uh, leave the phd program rather on the other hand i myself tried to convince the student that you should discontinue so i tried my level best to make him realize that you are not fit for phd program i did every uh, every possible trick i applied but just because he had this third thing unconditional commitment to work and you will be surprised to know that uh, within one year after joining me, just because he had this, why I'm saying so confidently, because after uh, joining me, he had to, I mean, his PA, JRF was discontinued. He joined me in uh, somewhere March. In uh, September, he had his RAC cleared. And I think October or September itself is JRF was discontinued. But he was so much committed to hard work that uh, he was committed to hard work that within one year, probably in September uh, this year, I'm talking about he joined me last year, September this year, when uh, we had uh, uh, his uh, presentation to continue his uh, JRF, it was discontinued September. And if you have got your paper published, then you can apply for continuation of your JRF. JRF. You'll be surprised to know that his JRF was not only continued, but he was given the promotion in the sense that he was offered SRF, Senior Research Fellowship. So that happened only because he had this third thing. So according to me, um, um, you know, my conviction that I should only look for this uh, really got in reinforced uh, after ha I mean, uh, having him. So uh, I will say that third thing is the most important thing if, he, if I have a student or I look for a student. Fourth point is trust. We have been talking about trust. Again, I'll give you example of two of my students. They are my best students. When I'm saying best means um, in terms of their research output, they have got more than uh, 20 publications. One student, she completed her PhD yesterday, defended her final uh, viva yesterday itself. She had got more than 20 papers published in Scopus, ABDC, uh, Web of Science Journals. And the other student whom I'm talking about in the context of trust, he has only cleared his uh, mid, mid review. And he has got more than 20 papers, again, accepted in all these uh, type of journal, index journals. So what I say, why, how they would have got that type of uh, performance? How they have managed to publish that many papers? If I introspect, try to understand what they have done, then probably I come out with this idea that they had a lot of trust on me. You know, still I believe that if I tell them that this is the uh, thing which they should do, I have found that they are doing it. Or they seriously think how that, can, that thing can be done. So, you know, now I have to be very careful when I deal with them. Because I know if I say something and they do it, so I have to be very, I have to feel responsibility. I just cannot say anything to them. If I'm saying it means they are going to do it. They are going to make efforts to do that. So what I'm saying, if you have trust on your supervisor, 
it will definitely pay in one way or the other. And surprisingly, what I feel that these two have given you example, three students, I have found that things are, these things are missing. They are not clear why, why they are doing PhD and I don't think so they are having enough seriousness to complete PhD. That is there. So 70% of you uh, might not have first two. Are you getting it? So this is for you to introspect. Third thing, again, I don't know how many of you are committed. Right now, I mean, again, I have a good number of students with me. And uh, still I find that, I mean, half of them do not have this third thing. Same thing applies to fourth. People may talk they have trust on their supervisor, but I don't know whether you understand or I understand who understand, who trust whom, I don't know. For saying everything is okay, but in reality only uh, quite less number of people, especially research scholars, they have faith on their uh, PhD supervisor. So it's not for the sake of saying, but what I have felt when I was a student, when I was doing my PhD, I somehow followed. We belong to a different type of uh, you know, cultural setup. But this is important. If you have, you will definitely uh, get rewarded. These two, quickly, I'll finish it off. May I have five more minutes, sir? Sir, last two, I'll just quickly finish. What do you think that, what is the research aptitude? Quickly, we don't have time. What is the research aptitude? Come on, tell me. What I say, if you have, you know, there are two types of people when it comes to work. Some people work 9 to 5, some people work 24 to 7. If you have mentality to work 9 to 5, then I'm, you know, my version is that you are not fit for research. I may be a little blunt, but that's a reality. If you believe in 9 to 5, you know, this work-life balance is a myth. People use it because they don't want to work hard. So if you, if you believe, you know, uh, no student can survive with me if he or she does not believe in 20, 24 into 7. So I, you know, request him, please leave me, please leave me. Either they change or they leave me. Usually they do the first thing, they try to change, come up with the, you know, my own, uh, I'm saying correct? So one more thing quickly I'll say that if you have interest in making, you know, what is your most important thing? What are you passionate for? You want money or you want excellence? If you want money, then I think that research is not your profession. It should not be. You should leave this research profession. If you have excellence as your priority, you are passionate for excellence, you strive for excellence, only, then only you should go for research. So, you know, if you have uh, passion to make more and more money, then you are in the wrong profession. Are you getting it? So you have to again introspect what is your priority. Money is your priority, then I think you are in the wrong profession. Research is not for you. Leave it. Don't waste everyone's time. Last is, uh, you know, Nwadha Madam was also talking about collaboration. What is the essence of collaboration? Come on. What is the essence of collaboration? Huh? <laughs> yes? Give and take. I tell you my version of collaboration. You should not do accounting or mathematics in collaboration. What I mean by this, <laughs> you know, people, you know, I have done 50% work. You need to do 50%. And if I have done 60%, 55% work, I should be given first uh, authorship. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So if you want to, I mean, essence of collaboration is practically you should not do mathematics in collaboration. Somebody has to work a little extra, and you can't every time fight. Are you understanding? I don't know whether you understand this because you are just starting, and we are daily facing such issues. So you want to collaborate, then you have to be generous. If you are stingy, miser, then again, I think you are a bad candidate for collaboration. If you want to collaborate, you have to be generous. You, you, you know, I may sound a little more uh, you know, idealist, but it's a reality. It's a hard reality that you have to be generous. And one more thing I very, you know, I'm fond of saying this. You want to collaborate, then you have to believe in one thing. Win-win. How many of you trust this, that win-win is the essence of collaboration? You know, all of us have got a habit of win and win and I don't care. Yes or no? I win and you lose win, I don't care. 
So if you have that mentality, then again, you are a very poor candidate for collaboration. You want to collaborate, then you have to very strongly, you know, I have got good number of research paper published in uh, last three, four years. I am, I am having more than, you know, good number of, again, sizable papers in pipeline. And why I'm doing this so good, just because I believe, very strongly believe in collaboration with this mindset that it should be win-win. Unless until the other fellow is getting benefit, he will not remain linked to me. She is there, my, all, almost all these students, those who have done PhD under me, they are still writing with me. The, why they are doing so? Why they are interested in doing so? Because they know if they are linked with me, their interests are also protected. Are you getting it? If I always look for my gain, my benefit, I won't get that many people to, ready to collaborate with me. You will be surprised that I'm writing at this moment, more than 20 odd people are writing for me. I don't have very high, I mean, I'm not a social person at all. Are you understanding? I have no other skill other than doing research. And I'm finding that more than 20 people, and I get requests from many other people to collaborate with me, but I have to, you know, politely say no to them because their area might be different. I'm in finance area, I, stick, uh, I prefer to stick to my area. Why would I deviate? But point here is collaboration. So essence of collaboration is generosity and win-win. Thank you very much.